a soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. The tongue of the wise useth knowledge aright, but the mouth of fools poureth out foolishness. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. The wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness therein is a breach in the spirit. We all have heard the saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words can never hurt me. That cash phrase has destroyed the minds of people everywhere. First of all, that phrase is very false. Israelites, watch out for the popular phrases the heathens love to use. The catch phrase may sound uplifting, however, it is not. The popular feel-good phrases are wrapped in deception. The Most High said to us, what is popular with the world is an abomination with him. And he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men, but God knoweth your hearts, for that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. You must examine everything the world deem acceptable. The world is an enemy to the Most High. If the world glamorize it, then it is an abomination to the Most High. Religion have numerous popular catchphrases. Satan's ministers love to use those phrases to brainwash the congregations. The sheeps love to recycle those phrases as if the Most High is the author. The Most High has nothing to do with those catchphrases. For example, we all have heard the phrase, don't be so heavenly minded that you are no earthly good. How can you focus on the affairs of the Most High and yet you are not earthly good? The Most High wants to have a personal relationship with his people. The Most High said to seek the things of the spirit and you will not gratify the flesh. This I say then, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. We all have heard the term the flesh. Most people don't know what it means to be in the flesh. The flesh can symbolize society, religion, governments, desires, and many other things. Anything that has to do with the flesh is worldly and of the kingdom of darkness. If you operate in the flesh, you are not pleasing the Most High nor seeking the affairs of the Most High. The flesh is an enemy to the spirit in everything pertaining to the Most High. The flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. If you bring no value to this world because you are heavenly minded, how are you pleasing the Most High? Do you see how deceptive and ludicrous that phrase is? The scriptures reveal to us that the flesh do not obey the laws of the Most High, nor submit to the affairs of the Most High. The real meaning behind that phrase is don't be focused too much on Yah because you will bring no value in society. In other words, that phrase is letting you know if you are too spiritual, not religious, because there is a difference, you are not helping the world. It is because majority of people today are earthly minded and not heavenly minded. That is what's causing destruction. We have spiritual leaders repeating to their congregation to not be too heavenly minded. Who are they serving? Satan loves to imitate the Most High and he does the complete opposite of what the Most High does. Israelites, always remember if it is the opposite of what the Most High said, then Satan is the father of it. When you focus on gratifying your flesh, the natural man, Satan is the force behind your fleshly desires. The popular phrase stems from the kingdom of darkness and it is meant to make you feel good and destroy you in the process. Just like organized religion, it is designed to destroy the people. Remember, Satan is the founding father of religion. The scripture said to us, death and life is in the power of the tongue. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Since death and life is in the power of the tongue, words can definitely hurt you. Israelites, the kingdom of darkness love to use your words against you. If the kingdom of darkness was unsuccessful in forging a covenant with you in the spirit realm, then they will seek to forge a covenant with you in the physical realm through your words and your mind. This is why your words can hurt you. 
The unclean spirits will place a thought in your mind. And when you speak those words, you identify with those words, which will cause whatever you spoke to manifest. Our words are alive and is designed to manifest whatever we are confessing. The reason our words are alive, if the Most High is not influencing your mind, then Satan is influencing your mind. Both kingdoms are seeking to forge a covenant with you. The scriptures reveal to us that the word of Yah are alive and powerful. It is important to remind the Most High of his words. That way, whatever his words promise will manifest in your life. The thoughts that stems from the kingdom of darkness are always negative. Therefore, if you agree with the negative thoughts, you bring forth death or a curse upon yourself. If you speak positive words, then you speak life and blessings into your life. Covenants are formed with words. When you confess and agree with your thoughts, an agreement was made. When you say you are broke, you are identifying with the spirit of poverty and unknowingly forge a covenant. You gave the spirit of poverty permission to manifest its will in your life. Being careless with your words will result in hardship and many failures. Israelites, not having the knowledge that your words can hurt you is not an excuse with the Most High. The scriptures reveal my people are destroyed from a lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. This is why the Most High encouraged his people to seek him and to get wisdom. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Forget it not. Neither decline from the words of my mouth. I want to give you an example to help you understand how your words are destroying you unknowingly. In addition to be careful with what you say, even if you have good intentions. Last week, I did not post a message on Open Diaries channel. The response I received from the subscribers were positive. Although your response were positive, majority of the subscribers were concerned. I was amazed with the amount of people who were concerned. We should never assume the worst if something out of the ordinary takes place. Yes, YouTube have issues and presently we are experiencing many hardship collectively as a people. Our people are suffering under the hands of the heathens all over the world. Assuming the worst should not be your first thought. Remember, death and life is in the power of the tongue. The Most High said he would never leave us nor forsake us. Yah also said he would fight for the righteous. Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee. Nor forsake thee. I know many Israelites are witnessing the injustice towards our people and it is discouraging them. It appears as if the Most High is not doing anything to help his people. To those who feel that way, you are wrong. The Most High is judging the wicked of his people. Just because you believe the victims are innocent and appear to be good by your standards does not conclude that person is not wicked. Remember, only a remnant of our people will return to serving the Most High. The remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob, unto the mighty God. For though thy people Israel be as the sand of the sea, yet a remnant of them shall return. Israelites, you never know if the Most High was warning some of our people slain by the serpent seed multiple times before the unfortunate took place. An Israelite may seem innocent in the flesh and by this world's standards, but in the spirit realm, in the most highest court and laws where it matters, he or she is found guilty and has blood on his or her hands. Yes, it hurts to see our people be executed harshly before our very eyes. However, judgment starts with the Israelites first. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? You have to start looking at this world in the most highest perspective, not how the flesh has taught you and made you feel. Yah will reveal to you what you need to know if you seek him. The most high will protect the righteous of his people. If the most high allows something to happen, remember he is using the trials for multiple reasons. I have posted videos while going through some tough trials and most people assume everything was fine. 
However, when I do not post and choose to rest, most people assume the worst. Do you see how the kingdom of darkness influenced you to automatically assume the worst? While some Israelites were assuming the worst, you are forging covenants unknowingly with the kingdom of darkness. I have been persecuted just like any other Israelite. As you grow with the Most High, the attacks from the kingdom of darkness are more severe and intense. I have watched the Most High take on my enemies and granted me victory. A person seeking the Most High and doing the will of the Most High is protected by the Most High, regardless of the persecution he or she is experiencing. Remember, the persecutions serve many purposes. It is through trials and tribulation a person grow, and the Most High use some of those trials to train his people. The one I serve is greater than he that's in this world. Hear of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. When you begin to entertain the negative seed, the kingdom of darkness planted in your mind, you unknowingly forge a covenant with the spirit of fear. Even if you had good intentions, that is how the kingdom of darkness deceive you. Remember, as you mature, Satan is more subtle with his deceptions. Society has programmed some of us to believe the worst if we have not heard from a loved one in a while or a person deviate from their usual patterns. Just like how those feel-good catch phrases can harm you, good intentions or motives coming from the kingdom of darkness are just as destructive. The kingdom of darkness will use your good intentions and words to deceive you. Pay attention to what you say and what you entertain in your mind. The scriptures reveal to us, as a man think it, so is he. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. The kingdom of darkness have convinced the indigenous people that they are inferior, cursed, and slaves. Many Israelites and indigenous heathens have accepted the negative thoughts the oppressor have mentally programmed into their minds. The scripture said, as a man think it, so is he. If you believe you are inferior, you will be inferior. If you believe you are ugly, you will hate yourself and most likely will become a colorist. Self-hatred and colorism is ravishing our communities. Through the self-hate gave Satan room to create false doctrines that will cause our people to continue to disobey the Most High. The spirit of self-hate or the spirit of hate gave birth to the false doctrine, you are what your father is. Many Israelites are choosing the hybrids to procreate in the hopes that their offspring will fit the world's standard of beauty. As long as you believe and accept Satan's standard of beauty, the spirit of hate will continue to destroy you. Words can definitely hurt you. When you begin to believe that you are royalty, you will have standards. Your behavior will begin to change and you will conduct yourself in a way that match your belief. Instead of believing the worst or feeling defeated, which are emotions that stems from the kingdom of darkness, think and act like a champion and you will become a champion. Goliath was the Philistines' champion. The Philistines thought no one can stand against their army as long as they had their champion. No one could defeat them. And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. And the Philistines said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. Goliath thought so highly of himself that he believed he could defeat the army of the Most High. When the kingdom of darkness come against you and try to belittle you, do what David did. David stand boldly before his enemies and place his faith in his Elohim. David said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine who tried to defile the army of Yah? And David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine? and taketh away the reproach from Israel. For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? David was not having it. David believed in the Elohim of Israel. Regardless of what it appeared to be, David knew the Most High already gave him victory. Likewise, Israelites, trust the Most High and use his words. Do what the Most High said to do. 
cast down every imagination that rise against the word of Yah and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of the Most High. Who is the synagogue of Satan who dare to come against me, the apple of the Most High's eyes? You will flee before me seven ways. Speak positive words. Use the word of Yah and you will gain victory. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. Israelites, your words can bless you or your words can curse you. As long as Goliath think and act like a champion, the people treated him like a champion. Israelites, when you begin to think and identify with the words of Yah, you will begin to see the words of the Most High become alive before your very eyes. If we continue to believe we are inferior, the heathens will continue to treat us like inferior people. You must renew your minds. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. By renewing your mind, it deprogrammed the filth, the kingdom of darkness placed in your minds. In addition, it gives the most high room to transform your life. You cannot let those who mistreat you and oppress you tell you who you are. Every time the kingdom of darkness plant those negative seed, quickly counter it with the word of Yah. Refrain from repeating the negative words. By the way, Israelites, if you agree in your mind, it is just like you confessing it out loud. A covenant is forged if you do not rebuke and cancel the covenant. Do not let Satan deceive you into believing because you did not say it out loud. It does not count. Yah heard you. When you speak in your mind, that is your spirit speaking. Your spirit is the real you. Have you ever noticed demons will stare you down in the realm of the spirit, but you are having a conversation via the mind? Start paying attention to your dreams and you will notice their behavior. Israelites, words can hurt you. The workers of iniquity cast spells on people by the words they use to forge covenants with the kingdom of darkness. The heathens never confess to the diabolical things they have done to us and continue to do to us until this day. They know the moment they confess, a covenant is made. Regardless if they confess or not, it is written. They will meet their fate. The words you use are important. Whatever you confess, that is what will manifest. The scriptures reveal that we have to give an account to the Most High for our every words. But I say unto you, that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. The thought of having to stand before the Most High to explain your every word should humble you and encourage you to choose your words wisely. You should not be careless with your words. I have seen Israelites in the so-called truth that have channels teaching the word, use curse words to express themselves and teach the Israelites. The scripture said, out of the same mouth come blessing and cursing. That should not be. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. I hope this will encourage those Israelites to repent and change their teaching style to a method that represents the Most High. In the days and times we live in, speak life into the atmosphere. Now is the time to trust the Most High and ask Him to plead your case. Request His help. Do not allow the negative thoughts that stems from the kingdom of darkness to paralyze you. In addition, do not let injustice towards our people influence you to set limitations on our Elohim. Do not let trials determine your relationship with the Most High. As long as you are for the Most High and stand with Him with a repented heart, the Most High will fight for you. Never assume the worst in any circumstance. If we can master the art of taming our tongue, we will elevate as a people. Israelites, you must choose your words wisely. Sticks and stones may break your bones. Words can hurt you. I hope you are now aware of how important it is to control your tongue. Do not be careless with your words. Remember, as you think it, you become just that. Israelites, be careful with who you allow to speak over you. Do not let wicked people or satanic pastors speak nor lay demonic hands on you. Their empty words will not do anything for you but cause more harm than good. Peter thought he was doing something good when he rebuked Yeshua for revealing that he must suffer. 
Most people may believe what Peter did was out of love and he cared. However, the scriptures reveal otherwise. Yahshua knew it was not of the most high, but of the kingdom of darkness. And Yahshua speak directly to the devil using Peter to interfere. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be under thee. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offence unto me, for thou savourest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Likewise, Israelites, some of the things we do may appear to be innocent, but the kingdom of darkness is the culprit behind the motive. Sometimes the repetitive setbacks you are experiencing could stems from the words you speak into your situations. Israelites, make sure your motives align with the Most High. I hope you are encouraged to speak life and blessings over yourself and our people. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers.